All right, joining me today, we have the one only Kyle Diskid Boogie at Aid. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm fantastic, but I'll improve. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel, you know, so far about Dome Park on the Grass? You know, coming back to Washington, you've been here a few times. Yeah, I came here back in the end of 2014 for Pacific Northwest Regional. Um, that's where I first played Bladewise, actually, which was pretty fun. And uh, played him again a couple nights ago, beat me again, he's great. But yeah, it's been really cool um, coming back to Seattle, staying at the Tuck House with Iceman and all those guys. And Don't Park has been awesome. It's a huge venue, tons of setups. Uh, they have a cool VIP room with setups so people can play there as well. And yeah, it's been running pretty well so far. I feel like you and uh, you have a like, fun story about why you want to beat Teddy Bladewise. Like the, your, every time you beat a piece, you know, like Oh, with my roommate, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so my roommate, Anthony, he's a Link player. He's my roommate in New York City. And Bladewise is his favorite player. He's like one of his favorite players. And so, yeah, every time I beat a peach, I say, oh man, I just beat this great peach player. And he says, was it Bladewise? And I say, well, no, he says, doesn't matter. And then I play Bladewise and I was like, oh man, I lost to Bladewise. He's like, of course you did, Bladewise is amazing. And when I finally beat Bladewise in a money match, I was like, yo, I beat Bladewise. And he says, did you wobble? I was like, well, yeah, it like, doesn't count. So, <laughs> so I can't catch a break. Bladewise is unbeatable to me. <laughs> do you feel like, did you feel pressure whenever you played him? It's like, man, I kind of beat him. It's like, <laughs> like my roommate. Yeah, it's mostly, mostly afterwards. I try to go into every match, like not worried about the outside stuff. But then after the match happens, I'm always very fully aware of all the implications outside of Smash. Uh, you know, you've traveled like a lot. Like, where have you been lately? Because I feel like you're just... Every time I turn on a stream, it's like this kid boogie. It's like, yeah. what the hell is Kyle doing in like Alaska this weekend? Yeah, so um, a big thing with my traveling is that I try to structure it around like where I'm spending time with my family and where I'm doing my music gigs. So this last couple months, I went to Rochester, New York to be with my sister who lives there to be there for Thanksgiving. And so then after that, I went to St. Louis for UGC and then Columbia, Missouri to play with the locals there. And then I drove to Chicago for Eden and then came here for Don't Park. Um, and then it works out nicely because I go home for winter break after this home in California. And then, yeah, Alaska, I go to Alaska tournaments because I teach and perform at a uh, jazz festival um, called the Sitka Jazz Festival, cool. which is in like the Southeast Alaska. Like if this is the state of Alaska, Sitka is like way down here. So it's, the temperature is basically like the same as Seattle. Um, but anyway, so I, go, I just go up to Anchorage and play with them because I'm up there and it's, it's cool to meet local people, go to like their restaurants, see the things they do, hang out with them, play with them. And it's always a treat for people in like small communities to be able to have like people from like bigger places go there, especially in Alaska. They're always like, you lower 48ers, you know, never come up here. So it's nice. Lucky one up there actually for really? a tournament over the summer, I think. So that was cool. So they have like dragon spook and... Dragon Spook, so awesome. He's <laughs> the guy with the wizard hat at Evo. Yep, and he taught me a ton just about the game in general, but also about the Marth matchup because he's a Marth player. And after playing with him, um, I went to New York, and that was the first time I beat the Moon. It was like two, two and a half years ago. After playing with Dragon Spook, I came and I just beat him, and it was like, dude, yes, I like I understand this matchup. And yeah, Dragon Spook's amazing. If you guys can check him out, you should. He had a good he had a good set with S Fat at uh, yeah. Evo twenty fourteen. I think he 14, had a set with NMW on stream too. Yes, he beat yeah. NMW yeah. Evo last year and two, two years ago. Yeah, 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 twenty fifteen. Yeah. And then he lost he lost the run back to him in losers semis, I think, because mm -hmm. he lost to Far uh, in winners finals mm -hmm. or yeah, you know, whatever it yeah, was. Whatever yeah. the Evo double elimination. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, how much do you feel you gain? You know, because you're probably like the most traveled melee player out there right now like because you know you're always there but like mm -hmm. how much do you feel like that's helped your like improvement because you know you've like been a rapidly improving player over like the last two years for traveling like the, a couple of the good things about traveling are that it allows you to play a bunch of different play styles mm -hmm. so going especially going from like the east coast to the west coast a lot of people in tri-state play really defensive and patient and a lot of people in california play like super aggressive mm -hmm. and impatient and so they're different they have different strengths and weaknesses that you have to learn how to defend yourself against and abuse respectively and so it's good to learn that because the really great players know how to switch between the two styles so you have to be able to switch with them so that's one thing that's helpful about it <coughs> um, another thing that's cool is that you just get exposed to more people and more scenes and and then when I go to big tournaments 
I have friends from all these different regions that I see, and so it makes it a much more enjoyable experience. Because instead of, you know, like if I were at Eden and I was only friends with like Zach from NorCal, mm -hmm. it's like just me and SFAT, and it's like, well, who else is there? I don't know. But instead, I get to be there and. Cobol's my friend and Drug Fox and all these people <laughs> from all these different places. I know them well because I see them at their locals and when we go to nationals. So it's like you get a, it makes it a better experience, I think. Do you ever feel like there's kind of like a downside? Because like since you're always moving, you know, maybe you don't get like lab as much as you'd want to or like, you know, like really get to know like the intricacies, like a matchup with like one specific person. So I do, luckily, since I play Ice Climbers, I have a lot of opportunities to practice matchups with people because everyone wants Ice Climber practice. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm just another fox and you can play any fox. It's like, oh wow, Discord Boogie's here. I need to learn ice climbers, let's play. Mm -hmm. So anytime I want to work on something, I actually remember before Fight Pit where I beat um, Hugs and Duck, and that was the first time I had beaten uh, either of them. I, I, was, I was in Pittsburgh the week before and Rose, who's a Samus player there, he had a folder on his computer of like 20 or 30 videos of Samus versus Ice Climbers. And we just practiced the matchup a ton because he wanted to learn it. And then it ended up helping me a bunch because I had to play those two guys. <coughs> so it's not so bad about not being able to lab. The main thing that I've noticed about traveling a lot is that since I'm not fully grounded in one region, uh, I don't get a whole lot, of, and because I'm, I'm an Ice Climbers player, <laughs> I don't get a lot of support at big tournaments. And so usually, you know, if you're... If you're playing at Big House and you're from NorCal, everyone's like, NorCal, Nor yeah. let's go, Zach, or something. But for me, it's like the NorCal people are like, oh, yeah, we're buddies with Kyle. And the New York people, yeah, we're buddies with Kyle. And everyone's <laughs> like, buddies with me. But there isn't a region that's like, yeah, Diz, he's our player. So that's the one thing that's kind of tough about it. Like when I'm playing, you know, to get, it would be nice to get like that support. Yeah. But it not being grounded makes it so that there's not too much ownership. I feel like you still got that with NorCal though. Like we took you in when like... Oh yeah. yeah, I mean like, you know, I'm born and raised in NorCal and, yeah. and that's where I feel like I've learned the most from playing and I always consider myself NorCal even when I'm like not there. Um, but yeah, I guess it's just in terms of like being on a big stage and having like a crowd. Like I know that I have a lot of friends in pockets in crowds. You don't but have there's that like never giant like that cheering giant, squad, like yeah. the Canada cheering squad when they yeah, like oh crazy my gosh. for oh. or the Or the Canada cheering like, squad when they went crazy for... Uh, Kage beating me, or Fork <laughs> beating me, or Kirby Kaze beating me, or Nun beating me, or Ryan Ford, or we on it. I can go on. Too many Canadian players beat me. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, you know, like, you've done, like, so well, like, this last year. Like, you know, like, what are the kind of changes you made in order to, like, make this huge jump? Because, like, like, your Miyam rank is going to be, like, a huge increase from what it was previously this next year. Right? Some, yeah, I, well, I hope so. <laughs> um, <laughs> some of the things that have been really helpful to me are that I've really embraced my attempt to optimize my punish game because mm -hmm. there's always a stigma about wobbling and I used to try to you know, downplay it or think, yeah, maybe I should work on my neutral more, maybe I should work on my, my solo climber game more or work on other throw combos. But then um, a few people, uh, including Cactuar, when I stayed with him back when he was in Philadelphia, he said that wobbling is such a strong punish and my game is centered around wobbling that I should strengthen that even more and learn how to like save my backup climber even more as opposed to like working on the solo climber is great and important but that's going to net me percent here and there but my wobbles are going to net me kills a lot more so I really worked on like how can I optimize every single situation in order to get a stock and usually that meant leading to a wobble uh, especially against fast followers I've practiced like my reaction tech chasing a lot and my edge guarding and tried to figure out better ways to use my backup climber to either cover a simple option edge guarding, like charging a forward smash if I need to grab the ledge or putting them on the ledge, um, but then also how to use them as a bait and then get a punish started with my main climber and then really push it. So I think like just constantly trying to optimize my punish game has always been my biggest thing. And I think another thing that's helpful about that is that when you have a really good punish game, every neutral win means something. Mm -hmm. And so then as you're winning neutral, you get to see like which neutral wins are worth more or less based on how they play into your punish game. But then if you don't have a good punish game, you win neutral and you get nothing out of it, it doesn't really tell you if it was a good or bad win in neutral. Because sometimes maybe you get a jab in neutral and that doesn't do anything. Whereas if you get a dash attack in neutral, that can be huge. 
And so having the punish game to respond to all those situations helps you to build your neutral better. And I think having a good neutral doesn't really help your punish game in the same way. So yeah, that's optimizing the punish game. That's been really important. Uh, I think the traveling is always helpful, playing more people, asking more questions. I've got to make uh, a lot of good friends who are really like, deep thinkers about the game. Like I mentioned, Cactuar and Drug Fox. Um, they're always like coming up with different information and frame data and things to talk about. There are a lot of Ice Climber players. I talk to Nintendo all the time mm -hmm. about matchup stuff um, and wobbles and fly. Um, Chu, I, man, I, I can't <laughs> learn from Chu because he's just too smart. Like, he does these things that I don't understand why they work. And, and he just, he knows that they're going to work, and so he does them. And I was like, it looks like a bad option, but he always does it, and it's great. So it's like, so there's something he does. But most of the Ice Climber players I can talk to about and learn. So I think having a big network of friends has been helpful. Um, and I just really study a lot. I study videos a lot. Um, I take notes about people's habits and take notes about my habits, take notes on what things I need to improve on. Um, I always try to ask a lot of questions, especially when I don't understand a situation. How can I get better at it? And um, yeah, I, I just really, I really want to win. I want to play optimally. I want to be perfect. And so I think always trying to achieve that makes it so that even if I win a big tournament or something, it's, uh, I'm not pleased. We're not, I'm not displeased, but I'm not content with that. Like, I still want to try to figure out how I can do better. And so I think, yeah, just having the drive to push yourself was super important for that and never getting complacent, mm -hmm. no matter how well you're doing. Armada talks about that. He talks about how he'll win and win and win and win, and it, like each win, obviously he likes winning, but he says that it makes him get used to it and complacent a little bit, and then when you lose, it's like, ah, oh, shoot, I don't like <laughs> losing, and now I want to win. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> Are there, uh, you know, any, is there anyone you're really looking forward to playing this weekend? Any names you want to take? So, um, if I'm able to win my pool in winner's side, and I guess that's what winning a pool is, <laughs> um, <laughs> then I would play Mike Hayes. And I'm really looking forward to that because... He's been doing I've really well lately. Yeah, he's an amazing player. And I've never played him in tournament. I played him in a money match once. It was at Smash the Record last year. And he beat me, game five, last stock, all that juicy stuff. <laughs> and so I'm salty. I want, yeah. I want another you chance want at him. Back. Yeah. And then if I play him again, or if I beat him, I would likely play against Hungry Box. And you had uh, a close set with him at the Tuck. Yeah, night, right? I played him last night. Um, I won a game, and two of the games I lost were last stock, last hit. Um, the first game he four stocked me. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> but like after no, we, we forget about that. Yeah, game. <laughs> yeah. But I've, this is actually the th third time I think I've. Yeah, the third time I played him in tournament, and it's the first time I've taken a game, so I knew that there was improvement, and I've always felt like I knew how I wanted to approach that matchup, and I just really wanted my shot at him. So hopefully I get another shot at him. That would be great. Um, I always like fighting foxes, so I yeah. uh, never played ice before. I'd like to play him. Uh, I want to play Zach again because he beat me <laughs> oh, last time we played. Yeah, there's a lot of people. I would love to play them all, uh -huh. but I'm, I'm most prepared for and thinking about Hungry Box. Not to overlook any other yeah. matches, but with Fox, can't, it's like you go in. Yeah, too. absolutely. But He's yeah, like, with Fox, you kind of go in and yeah. do your thing, and it's Fox. And the Hungry yeah. Box is like a whole different beast because you know there's like not many puffs in between. Like. Right. Yeah. Not a lot of research. You can like material. work your way off the Fox ladder, but like with like puffs, it's like four percent a boo tech, and then like H box. Like, right. That's like a very small ladder to go up. Yeah, definitely. It's like hard. <laughs> All right. Um. You know, is there anything you want to say to your fans? Oh, my fans. Any of you who exist, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I actually, what, what I was saying earlier about like the crowd thing and the support, every time I play at a big tournament and usually it's like a, a, an overwhelming majority of the crowd is like against me, um, it, yeah, re it really, it, <laughs> yeah, it really means a lot when, when people come up and say nice things, uh, no matter how little they are. Um, there was actually a guy at Eden who was just like heckling me and trash talking me and booing me the whole weekend. And then by the end, he came up to me and he said, you know, Diz, I used to think you were like terrible and just a wobbler. <laughs> and like, I was like really hating on you this weekend, but man, watching you, like you're really great. And, <laughs> and dude, you're sick and I, it's changed my mind. And, and even though I was salty that he had been like heckling me all weekend, <laughs> it really meant a lot. So yeah. to anyone who, who finds any joy in watching me play, I do appreciate that you appreciate it because, uh, 
it's nice to hear positivity amongst a sea of negativity. I, I always cheer my heart out when there's a wobbles like dead sound. Oh, I'm like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> wobble here. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, but um, where can the people find you? So I have my Twitter is at DizKidBoogie, D-I-Z-Z-K-I-D-B-O-O-G-I-E. And my tag is always supposed to be all lowercase. People sometimes capitalize parts of it, all lowercase, DizKidBoogie. Um, and then I have a band, Kyle Athade Dance Party. Ooh, it's good. And uh, Facebook.com slash Kyle Athade Dance Party. My last name is A-T-H-A-Y-D-E. And you can also go to our website, kylewithadedanceparty.com. Uh, we recorded a new album, six tracks of video game music, and four tracks of originals, which are inspired by video games and anime. Uh, so I'm sure all of you guys might be interested in hearing that. And we're hoping to have it released by the time Genesis comes out. Maybe you see it on the Genesis. Maybe. Maybe. So look out for it, the Kyle with Aid Dance Party. All right. Thanks for you know, doing this interview, Kyle. Thank you very much. Good luck this weekend, and uh, you know, hope to see you take H walks from NorCal. <laughs> yes, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Make sure to follow Kyle on Twitter and uh, you know, thanks for watching the interview guys. Peace.